Well, I've seen finance ministers, uh, heads of businesses cringe in front of you, Shireen. So I think <laughs> you've gotten there. Nobody wants to be recipient of that steely gaze of yours and that cross-questioning and be on your wrong side. That I'm sure of. So I want to pick up on a very important theme here, and that is, and Kiran touched on it, and that is the role of fathers. And while there aren't that many fathers in the audience, I hope that you all can take the book back for the fathers, because in every one of these stories, the influence of the father on these women was huge. And it just tells me that we were very, very fortunate that we had fathers who led us on our journeys the way they did, that they were there for us, and they took that mentoring and uh, that watchfulness over our growing up the way they did. So I, I'm going to come back to a very important subject, which is the men in our families. The father uh, and the importance of the father, and I want each of you to comment on that. Uh, the husband, and uh, I think I actually say this in my introductory chapter, that choose your husband well. And in fact, Dev Jani, at, uh, the CEO of Intel, says, it's a career choice. <laughs> choose your husband well. So, I, again, you know, so the role of the husband, uh, and if each of you could touch on that, and of course, male mentors, many of us have only had uh, men as bosses and uh, we've had, therefore, sometimes the good fortune of having the right boss or the right mentor at the right moment. And people like Kiran uh, had the right banker who was also a guy. So it's about the men in our lives. So this isn't about ma male bashing today. It's about celebrating the guys that got it. So for any of you who wants to kick off on that, uh, you know, how, who and how did you benefit from that? And uh, Nirupama, you have to be really nice because your husband's sitting right in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I just can't, uh, you know, you ca cannot but emphasize the importance of the role of men in your, in your lives. And it's not just because my husband's sitting here. Uh, I, wa I, I always remember my, my dad and I wrote about it in the chapter and uh, first of all I think what made all the difference for me as I was growing up was that I had this, literally this father figure who uh, spoke of vision, who spoke of ambition as a positive word and who taught me just to be confident enough uh, to aspire and to seek to achieve in, in, a very, in a very nice and positive sense. It was not as if he, you know, he was in, in by asking me to imbibe the, uh, the uh, importance of being ruthless or being you know, completely um, you know, determined in a, in, a, in a way that did not take into account the environment around you or the people around you. He was, I think, a very compassionate person also. I think what was most important, uh, where both my parents were concerned, and I think my mother also played a very important role in my becoming uh, what I became. Both of them together, I think it was just in many ways um, something made in heaven. Both of them complemented each other in terms of what they taught me. My father, as I said, was the dreamer, was the visionary, was the person who taught me about, gave me my love for history, for politics, for current affairs, of being curious about the world around me. And my mother was this very grounded, very practical, but extremely intelligent woman who had been to college, the first woman in her family to go to college, and this was just during the freedom struggle. She had to fight with her parents to leave home to go to college in a town that was about four or five hours away by train. She went into a hostel and you know she, uh, when she used to talk about her college years and about the friends she made and about the, you know, the activities they had in college, the not just, she studied mathematics and she was a very good student, but she also taught me about, uh, you know, I remember her telling me the story of Orpheus and Eurydice when I was a little girl. And here was this introduction to Greek mythology, which was completely foreign in so many ways to us at that time. We didn't have television. Of course, we had access to books, and both of them instilled in me this great love of reading, and I was an extremely voracious reader. And most importantly, you know, the fact that 
they were able to put their finger on what was important. I remember them taking me to see the, His Holiness the Dalai Lama when I was nine years old. The Dalai Lama had just come to India, he'd taken refuge here and he was passing through Lucknow where we lived and his train was coming through Lucknow station and my parents, uh, my mother's brother was a liaison officer to the Dalai Lama and he invited us told my parents that would you like to bring, we were three little girls, three daughters, my parents took a lot of selfies with their daughters and they took us to see, uh, you know, this historical figure and I still remember that scene so vividly. I have my schoolgirl's autograph book with the signature of His Holiness and I remember the date, it was Valentine's Day 1960. <laughs> so I still have that and so all this kind of you know, access in many ways, very humble access. It, it was not as if, my father was an army officer, he was not very senior at that time. Uh, we didn't even possess a car, I remember. Uh, we had a bicycle, at, I remember, and we used to go to school, uh, not by van, but by Tonga. But they gave us the best education in the world. They gave us this access to knowledge. They taught us to thirst for information. They taught us the love of music. So we had a wonderful growing up and we never felt ever at any time diminished, and I say diminished, I put it in quotes, by the fact that gender was an issue in our lives. We were just told that you have to stand on your feet, you have to be independent. And I wanted to join the Foreign Service and my parents did not insist that I go into medicine. My other two sisters went took up medical careers. My father was keen in some ways that I become a doctor too, but when I announced to my parents when I was 15 years old that I was going to study the humanities, that I was going to try for the Foreign Service, they allowed me to take that decision and they did not seek to influence me to take any other decision. So I'm very, very indebted to the fact that they gave me that, that space uh, to blossom. Uh, to achieve uh, what I wanted to. And then when I went, uh, when I joined the Foreign Service when I was all of 22 years old, I remember going uh, to the academy in Missouri. I didn't know a soul in, in my batch or class, as they say in the United States. There wasn't a soul I knew and that's where I met my husband. And uh, he was from another service the IAS, the Indian Administrative Service, which, you know, if you are um, an insider in the civil services, you, there is a very uh, strong sense of rivalry between the Foreign Service and the Indian Administrative Service. So here I met this young man and uh, I, didn't, I had, didn't know, any, as I said, anybody at, in the batch those days. And then when we decided, when we started going out and we decided to get married, the, the basic challenge, the basic problem, the riddle before us as it were, was how were we going to manage with our lives? Because here he was in the administrative service, which is basically a home-based service, as you all know, and I was in the foreign service, so very foreign to, you know, the environment within the country in many ways because you have to be ready to serve abroad, you have to be prepared for long periods of being away from India. And that translated in our lives into being away from each other for extended periods. I mean, that was inbuilt into the marriage when we took that decision. So it was a decision in many ways. It was like, you know, deciding to take, uh, you know, to do a bungee jump or something, you know. <laughs> just, you just had to do it, but you never know what lies at the, at the end of it. But uh, both of us, uh, I think, were committed to the relationship and most importantly, and I'm not saying it because my husband's here, <laughs> I think, um, you know, he's, he's the most, um, in many ways, democratic person alive, I'd say. He never sought to, <laughs> he never sought to impose any decision on me. Any decision I took was going to be my own. Of course, I would be responsible for the consequences of it. <laughs> you know, that was, that was, of course, you know, implied and all that. But he, 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 I think, gave me, again, like my parents did, that space in which to grow and uh, to achieve my dreams. And he's, he's been, you know, always my greatest champion. And I think that I, you know, can hardly disagree with what Nena just said, that choose your husband's
carefully. <laughs> and and uh, you may do that. I mean, you may meet you know, a man on the spur of the moment and sometimes that decision uh, to marry him or to decide to have a long-term relationship with him turns out to be the best thing you did in your life. Thank you. So, Shaheen, Kiran. Well, I think, uh, you know, I think I echo a lot of what Nirupama said because as I mentioned earlier, I think every one of us was very fortunate to have a father figure and a family. You know, basically it's not just about fathers but also your parents. I think in my case certainly I did something very unconventional thanks to my father. You know, pursuing a career in brewing is not something a father will encourage his daughter to do. <laughs> but he did, you know, and he said, look, the one thing all our parents did for us was they made sure they educated us, gave us the best education and my father certainly said put your knowledge to good use. You know, pursue a career that applies your knowledge and so he encouraged me to, do, to study brewing and then of course uh, when I decided to start up my company of course my parents really gave me all the moral support because obviously they were not very wealthy but you know they really gave me a lot of moral support when I was building the company and then you know talking about other uh, you know male uh, influences in my life certainly my husband is a great great champion as you know Nirupama said you know when we got married again it was a long distance marriage because my husband was based abroad and I was in India and I still remember having that conversation after spending that first year of marriage doing and flowing and I said, you know, John, one of us has to give up our jobs and it's not me. <laughs> That's what you call a one-way conversation. <laughs> and of course, I'm just joking, but I think my husband really said, look, I think you have a great career. And he said, I really, I have no hesitation giving up my job and helping you build the business. And uh, I think, you know, he's been such a great... Uh, you know, champion, he's been a great anchor for me. He never wants to be in the forefront. He's always pushed me ahead and said, you know, do what you have to do, you know. And so I think, and then as you said, you know, I've had uh, a lot of uh, mentors in my life who were also male. Uh, you know, Mr. Vagul, who was the only banker who really believed in my story, who was willing to bet on me and who said, listen, there's only one condition that I will give you this amount that you need to scale up your technology and that is I'm not going to give you a loan, I'm going to invest in your company. You know, so I think these are the kind of influences in my life that have made me stronger. And I think certainly all of us can reflect upon various male influences uh, to which we owe a lot because, you know, I think because of that we've, be we've been and, uh, strong and we are who we are today because it's also helped you to build up a lot of confidence because of that. So I think it's, it's, it's for, as you said, I think it's important for you know, men to basically look at these stories and see what an important role they play in shaping the lives of women. And Shaheen, you talk about uh, growing up uh, in a world of privilege, uh, exposure to so many countries because of your father's career and how you internalize that to basically think if this is the life you could have why couldn't all those other little children who you encountered along the way and very few of us actually internalize that uh, how young were you when those first thoughts of Sandhya and others began to penetrate your thinking 